I'm Tony O'Rourke, a consultant for strategic alliances with Inago, and I'm here today with Charlie Rappel, who's co-founder as well as sales and marketing director of Kudos. Charlie's also associate editor, editor of Learned Publishing, which is the journal of the uh, Association of Learned and Professional Society Publishers, and that journal is published together with the Society for Scholarly Publishing. Kudos is a web-based service that helps researchers and their institutions and funders to maximise the visibility and impact of their published articles and research. Kudos provides a platform for assembling and creating information to help search filtering, for sharing information to drive discovery, and for measuring and monitoring the effect of these activities. In today's interview, we'll be discussing the need for services like Kudos, as well as their impact for both early stage researchers as well as experienced researchers in countries such as Japan, Korea and China. Charlie will be sharing the importance and relevance of Kudos in today's publishing industry and the advantages of using it for researchers. She'll be sharing how Kudos has had an impact for researchers globally and some of the highlights of Kudos over the last few years. The interview, this interview, is a continuation of an interview series called Connecting Scholarly Publishing Experts and Researchers. So Charlie, hello. Hello. Can you share the initial idea behind Kudos? Yeah, there were a number of different themes that seemed to come together at the time when we set up Kudos. Um, my co-founders and I had all been working in the scholarly communications uh, industry and tackling a lot of the same issues, um, much more research being published and the challenges for researchers themselves in making sure that their works were finding an audience, um, but also as readers trying to digest growing amounts of literature um, and keep up with the important developments in your space. Um, we were also at a time when metrics were really taking off in new ways, so um, the digital publishing mechanisms had enabled metrics to be calculated at article level, and there was a growing interest not only in article level metrics such as downloads, but also the growth in alternative metrics that looked at the attention being paid to work um, in social media and in government policy and Wikipedia and so on. So there were lots of different aspects of, of, of change in our community that inspired us to think about how could we help researchers um, perform better against these metrics, ensure that their work was finding an audience and ultimately that it was having the impact required to help them in their constant pursuit for funding. Um, and I guess that was the final aspect of it, that uh, funding has become such a more competitive space um, over the last few years. There's been less funding, more people um, looking to, to get at it. So we were trying to help people ensure that they and their work were performing in a way that would help them stand out and help them gain more funding. So, so Kudos is free for the research community? Yeah, absolutely. So what are the primary benefits for researchers to use Kudos, would you say? Lots really. I mean, as you say, it's free and it doesn't take long. It's a very easy service to use because uh, a big part of what we as specialists in marketing and product development wanted to do was make a service that would be very simple, a workflow that really cut out a lot of different aspects and focused on what would really help improve the performance of your work. Um, and it really does work. Um, there was an independent study earlier this year of the first couple of years worth of data that we'd build up that showed that when researchers use Kudos to explain and share their work, they can achieve something in the order of 23% more downloads um, for their work. And of course, downloads are at the heart of any other kind of impact. You know, before you can have citations, people need to read your work. Before there can be online discussion and other kinds of impact, people need to read it. So growing readership is, is the main focus of what we're trying to help people do. Okay. So what are the prerequisites then for a researcher before they start using Kudos? Very little really. Um, one aspect of the system is that it's currently based around Crossref DOIs. Now 5,000 publishers assign Crossref DOIs. Many of the, most of the outlets in which researchers will be publishing will be assigning a Crossref DOI. So that's the only real prerequisite and for most people that's not going to be a problem. And as soon as there's a Crossref DOI you can find your work in our system and you can take our three simple st steps to increasing its readership. So Charlie, can you give me some examples of where Kudos has made uh, a difference? 
Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to the study that I mentioned that shows on an uh, aggregate level people are, uh, people's use of QDOS is correlated to 23% higher downloads, we get some fabulous stories of actually what that's meant for individuals. A um, couple that spring to mind. One is um, a geological researcher who um, had not published very much, so I think this was her second paper that had come out of her PhD and she had recently published it, she explained it on QDOS in fantastic simple plain language explanation uh, that even helped you know, a lay person like me understand the nature of her research um, and then she uh, posted a tweet out, in fact she posted three or four tweets over a series of time she's now achieved over a thousand views of her work on QDOS and this Impressive. has really excited her um, she's tweeted since then saying um, what a great insight that's given her into the fact that there are people out there reading her work even her at the early stage of her career um, and my, my favorite comment that she said was that this is getting her excited about her research again because she can see there's this wider audience rather than feeling a little bit alone in a vacuum with it um, and another really interesting story was somebody who was using uh, a feature on QDOS that enables you to add links to related works uh, that, pop, that in many cases have uh, come into existence after publication and so it, there's no other way in which they're connected to your publication. In his case he was uh, trawling the web looking for a couple of things that he wanted to link in in that way and discovered something, somebody else using his data in a really interesting way building on his work that he hadn't known about previously. So the process of uh, explaining and, and sharing sharing his work via QDOS actually caused him to come across a new collaborator who he's mm. then gone on and done some more work with. So there's all sorts of really interesting stories like that and people are very excited in telling us um, about their successes and about their experiences with the service. So there's been some pretty exciting uh, benefits for researchers. What about other stakeholders like um, universities, uh, journal publishers, funders? Yeah, I mean the, the, the wonder of what we're doing is that by encouraging researchers to do their explaining and sharing through a central system. We're then building up a massive data set that can then be interrogated and used by institutions, publishers, funders, societies, anybody else with an interest in the success of that work and who can then support the researcher and collaborate through QDOS with the researcher in building up the impact of that work. We work with 70 publishers um, and they're doing all sorts of exciting things in terms of tapping into these plain language explanations, reusing those on publisher websites to increase increased discoverability there, um, acknowledging and interacting with the researchers' communications around their work and helping those to reach a broader audience. Um, so it's a wonderful way to make sure that everybody's efforts in pursuit of this common goal are all managed through a central system so you can build on each other's efforts. And where publishers and institutions might separately have been doing press releases and things before, now they can all work together and see whose effects are gaining traction. They can also, at that um, publisher and institution, level look at the aggregate level of um, across all the the authors or, or researchers that I'm affiliated with which channels are proving most effective who's having most impact and start to understand a lot more in um, in an evidence-based way about how best to communicate around research which can shape their own activities and ensure that they um, save time and do things in a more effective way but also critically shape the guidance that they give to researchers and of course they can do that um, kind of a analysis at a regional level as well so they can look at what's working better for our authors in China or what's working better for our authors in Russia and provide different kinds of guidance based on evidence rather than the, um, the, the world that existed previously where people were experimenting with different kinds of communications but didn't really have the detailed insight or the way of joining the dots between communications activities and publications metrics so it was very difficult previously to know what was actually working. QDOS solves that problem for everybody. So where has QDOS established itself? Which regions has it established itself? And, and we're both marketing professionals, I'd be interested to know how you've reached those target audiences? Around the world very much so. We now have over 100,000 researchers um, using the service and um, I think about 23% of those are in Asia for example, 8% in India, 5% in China. So there's a lot of audiences um, around the world who recognise this common need to build the impact of their work. 
Um, we've mostly reached them in the first instance through our publisher partnerships. So I mentioned we're working with 70 publishers and um, they are inviting all of their authors at the point of publication or indeed often inviting authors of backfile content to come and explain and share that work. But we're also now starting to run our own campaigns directly to researchers. Now that we have um, good evidence for why the system is worth using um, and a little bit more uh, brand visibility, um, we can start to engage directly with researchers. Um, we're running a, a fantastic campaign at the moment called Mobilise Research, um, which is designed to encourage researchers to embrace this idea of broadening the audience, um, encouraging them to, to support the idea that their work deserves that broader audience, um, and encouraging them to share via QDOS or even just to tweet using that hashtag Mobilise Research. Um, and that's already proven to be very successful um, at increasing awareness and uptake of our service. So we'll be doing a lot more of that work directly with researchers as well as continuing our work through publishers and institutions and so forth. So I'm interested to find out more about this broader audience. How has QDOS helped with um, global visibility? researchers and their work? I think there's a lot of different ways in which we're trying to help with that challenge. One is that in encouraging people to explain their work in plain language, that just by itself is making that work more accessible in, in a linguistic sense to more people. So whether it's people um, outside your specialist area of work or whether it's speakers of other languages, um, you're helping simplify your explanation of the work so that more people can understand it. And of course those plain language explanations also lend themselves more readily to auto translation so that if anybody does find them and still can't quite understand them it's much easier to put that into an online search engine and get a meaningful result than if you were to put perhaps the original abstract in which might be too dense and technical to, to really work well in a translation mode. Mm -hmm. um, but of course these uh, plain language explanations also in using a different language are also just actually making that work more discoverable through search engines and things because now a different range of search terms will find that work than the uh, the original abstract which will again have um, discipline specific language that may not be the language that everybody is using to search for it. Thank you. The last 10 years in publishing has been really interesting and then we've, all, we've almost seen this kind of parallel industry being created, publishing services industry being created. Uh, I'm interested to know from your perspective how long do you think it's going to be before researchers start to embrace uh, to, uh, resources such as Kudos? I think when you look back exactly as you say over the last few years, researchers have been really quick to embrace a lot of aspects um, of, of these new developments. So they were very quick to start using online journals, for example, um, very quick to embrace reference linking and things like that. Um, in certain communities, you already see quite a lot of uptake. Um, I think probably actually um, ORCID, for example, the, uh, the identifier for researchers that helps to disambiguate between authors with the same name, that has obviously taken off particularly in some kind countries where the issue of people having the same name is more common. So I think there are already pockets of widespread uptake. I think it will be perhaps only five years before everybody's using ORCID, everybody's aware of Altmetric and looking at that, everybody's um, trying to take a, an active approach to increasing the impact of their work with a toolkit like QDOS. Is, is there a geographic bias that you see more take up in some countries compared to others? I think based on our data it would be hard to make that judgement because obviously the nature of how we've rolled the service out means that we would obviously have a bias in some countries where um, we've worked with more publishers in the UK and US so obviously we've got higher levels of sign up among authors in those countries. Um, I think the fact that our usage outside of those countries like for example Asia which has just overtaken the US as a um, in terms of the numbers of people signed up for QDOS. I think that demonstrates that there is enormous appetite for what we're doing and we just need to um, work more closely and, and um, approach more directly people in those countries to tell them about what we're doing. And once they learn about us, they typically do sign up quite quickly. I mean, QDOS is, a, is still a relatively young product, uh, a young a service, I should say. And what have been the, the, the highlights of QDOS? Since, since you launched? You're right, I mean we've, we've really only been around for two, two and a half years. and yeah, um, two and a half years. Exactly, right. and, and, and in that time so much has happened. Um, a massive highlight for us actually was about this time last year we won the ALPSP award for innovation in publishing. 
um, which was a huge testimonial, a huge um, endorsement of, of the, the need for something like QDOS and that we had got the model right in terms of what we were doing um, and that it was making a difference. So that, that was a, a fantastic um, sense of uh, endorsement by our peers and people who really are qualified to judge um, whether what we're doing is worthwhile. But there have been lots of other exciting moments along the way. Um, a little bit before that we'd won some government funding from the UK government which was a, again a, a real really difficult process actually to go through and um, there was no guarantee at all that we would be successful so that was a real highlight um, when we were successful in that respect. Um, and then more recently actually one of um, the big highlights for this year for me um, has been a piece about us in nature um, when we were added to the nature toolbox um, which looks at tools that are available to help researchers of all types um, and uh, they took a very close and rigorous look at what we were doing and um, the ways in which it was helping and spoke to lots of different people and and, the, and some really um, great supportive comments came from the people that they spoke to and uh, it was very exciting to be um, talked about in such in such a prestigious publication. That's fantastic. What, what, what about research funders and research institutions? How is QDOS being used by that sector to track the impact of the research that they're funding? Obviously they're very interested and watching very closely what we're doing. Um, we've begun working with institutions already. Um, we've just actually in the last few weeks um, signed an agreement with JISC which uh, manages the procurement of uh, content mostly but also increasingly services like ours um, in the UK and that is exciting in that it again shows that there is an institutional recognition of what we're doing and the need for what we're doing um, and so we're looking forward to um, rolling out our institutional services more widely and as part of the process of, of gaining that JISC agreement um, it encouraged us to totally rethink the way we were pricing our service for institutions around the world as well. So actually, although that's a UK specific deal, the benefits of that will be felt by institutions around the world. Um, and on the funding side as well, we have a lot of conversations on the go, a lot of people watching very closely what we're doing and very interested. Um, everybody benefits. If you can centralise and, and manage and, and surface in a central way, researchers communications about their work there is so much to be gained from that intelligence and that's a data set that just hasn't existed previously everybody can benefit from that and for funders it's really interesting to just be able to see which of the people you fund are actually taking active steps to do undertake outreach around their work and what effect is that having and how does that influence the metrics and so on so that's really important intelligence um, and we do see a lot of interest from, from funders and universities very interesting what, what new features have you got do you see coming up in QDOS over the coming months and years? We have such a full roadmap for development, as you can imagine. It would take us through many years, but lots of really exciting things there. I mean, it ranges from some quite high-end things, um, like taking the product or the idea of the product that we developed for publishers and institutions and starting to repurpose that for societies, for example, um, who can then start to use the intelligence in QDOS to help them with everything from kind of supporting current members to actually seeking out potential new members. Um, we're also working with people in the corporate sector who are very interested to track how research that might refer to their products um, is being discussed um, in the literature. So there's a lot of kind of big, big developments like that, but all the time we're undertaking kind of incremental improvements of how we do things. And a big theme for us in that respect at the moment is what we're calling actionable insights, um, which is taking us from a quite report-based system at the moment, where all the intelligence is there, you can download it, you can pivot it a little bit and manipulate it a little bit, but ultimately you've got to then join the dots in terms of what that means for you. We're starting to do some of that thinking for people and heading towards um, being able to give people what we call action cards so that you know you could log into the site and it will present you with a series of five or six things that with a couple of clicks you can act on those so we're we're telling you what this intelligence means for you and what you need to do with it to improve the engagement with your work or the impact of your work um, and that will be across all the different um, customer groups that we serve that kind of approach to boiling down that intelligence to make it even quicker, even easier for people to take advantage of it and act on it rather than um, requiring people to have to figure out what to do with it for themselves. Mm. In, a, in a relatively short period of time, QDOS 
in less than three years, as you say, Kudos has established itself as a, as a core brand within the scholarly communication uh, industry. Uh, what, what are your future plans? We've certainly achieved a lot in a small amount of time with that, but we're not oblivious to the fact that there's a lot more to do. So um, I think one thing I'd really like to see us doing is um, extending the reach of that brand in the researcher community. I think we're very well known in the publishing world and increasingly so in the institutional and funder and society world. But re the researcher world is obviously much bigger and there's many more individuals that we would like to be able to connect with. And I think particularly um, we'd like to be able to uh, expand our um, connection with researchers um, in Asia and in some of the other countries that have um, less developed research infrastructures and where people are struggling much harder to achieve impact with their work. They're doing great research but they're struggling to gain the visibility that that deserves on the international stage and I see that we could have a, a really big role in helping them to take ownership of that, have simple tools to help them um, work their way through simple processes to increase the visibility of their work and therefore gain the, uh, the recognition that they deserve. Excellent. So my last question you'll be pleased to hear. Uh, in today's environment there's a real drive uh, amongst publishers and journals to promote research through a variety of different platforms. But researchers themselves are often reluctant or reticent to use or to adopt these new platforms and trends. What's Kudos doing to uh, come to the rescue of these researchers? That was certainly something we were really conscious of from the very beginnings of our discussions around this toolkit was it's got to be easy and it's got to show people that their efforts are worthwhile and it's got there's got to be hardly any distance between those two things. They need to move quickly from undertaking an action to seeing the results of that action and that really drove so many aspects of the development of the product and the interfaces and the data sources that we sought for it and the processes that we developed within it. And I think that has been the secret to a lot of our success so far and the, the speed with which we've been able to gain traction is because we brought together data that previously was really time consuming for people to to go and look for, to even to know that it existed and to pull it all together and try and make sense of. And we now have a really simple graph that just shows you this is the point at which you sent out a, a, a social media posting about your work and this is what happened to the readership of your work or to the discussion of your work online or to the citations around your work. And taking out a lot of the noise, taking out a lot of the effort involved and creating a really simple workflow so that people could quickly, in five minutes, explain their work, get the, the trackable link for sharing it and then come back only hours later and see the results that they'd achieved um, and, and all the mechanisms we've wrapped around that in terms of emailing them and encouraging them to be able to see that. I think that's what's made it work for us and that's the way in which we're different to a lot of the other systems that people are being asked to use which don't have such a a clear benefit for researchers or even if there is a clear benefit they haven't been able to demonstrate it so demonstrably that's been a focus from us from the outset and I think that's why so many people have adopted the service that we've created. Charlie Rappel thank you very much. Tony O'Rourke thank you very much. Well thank you to the Inago Academy for asking me some questions today about QDOS. I've really enjoyed thinking through uh, some of the aspects of what we've discussed and I really hope that we can soon help a lot of the re researchers and authors who are in Japan, South Korea, China and many of the other countries who are seeking to increase the impact of your work. So in summary, if you're a researcher based in any country but particularly in markets, big research economies such as China or Japan, South Korea, and you're interested in giving your research the best possible chance of global visibility, then I would urge you to look at Kudos as a service for yourself and for your organisation.